Hello, welcome back. Now, it's a really lovely evening and we have a lot of rain forecast for the rest of the week. So, what I thought I was going to do is get some of my summer squashes out. Now, when we were thinking of what new things I wanted to grow this year, high on the list were patty pans. So much so that for Christmas my sister bought me this really cute little Beatrix Potter book that she got when she was on holiday last year. It was that much on my mind that patty pans had to be the thing. So I'll just insert a little picture of this book up here and it's so delightful. So to be getting these patty pans in the plot now is actually quite special. So because I've been quite excited to grow them, I thought they should get the centre stage right outside of the polytunnel door. So I hope I'm going to actually like them because I've never eaten them, because I've never even seen them in shops. I've only seen them on fellow YouTubers or Instagrammers. I've already raked the bed over to loosen the soil to prepare it for that. I have some chicken manure pellets and have a selection of squashes here. So the first thing I'll plant is patty pans and then I'll tell you what else I've got to plant in the bed next to us. So these are the patty pans that I have, as you can see, absolutely desperate to get out. The custard white variety is what I'm growing. So I was thinking maybe have one sort of here, I'll lie him down. And which other one am I going to try? We'll have this one. I'm going to lie him down. Um, I don't actually know how big they get, so I don't know whether they'd be better like that like that hmm. or potentially on a bit of a diagonal what do we think a diagonal yeah i think i'll do that could always get some companion crops in then there can't i Get the chicken manure pellets ready. Put some pellets in the bottom, mix it in a bit and see if I can tap him out without damaging his roots. Look at that, lovely roots. Oh, and the sun's just shining beautifully behind you. It's like golden hour has come to mark the occasion. too bad in the roots is he? Oh, I'm so excited to get these in the ground. I was really excited when I was potting on the cucumbers earlier because the smell of cucumber, oh so good. If you don't mind the rain and the wind that's two patty pans planted. <gasps> what I've just thought that I can put here is another little bit of calendula. Put it here in the middle. And obviously I've got all the lettuces here. So far so good. The little red lettuces haven't been taken by slugs. They are a variety called Archerito. So what else am I planting? These bendy plants here, they do need supporting and they're a little bit deeper when they get in the ground. These are called butterbush. So these are a variety of butternut squash, but instead of being a long trailing vine of a butternut squash, they are actually a compact butterbush. So you could grow them in containers. So if you don't have much garden space, container gardening is for you. 
then butter bushes are also for you. So I'm going to put those, I think, in the bed next to here. Now, I'm just going to see if I have a fourth one in the greenhouse because I think I could put four here. But I'll put these three out to start with and see how we get on. Again, pretty decent root growth on there. Happy with that. Might as well put this one on this side. Now we absolutely love butternut squash soup. Now these don't produce as big a butternut squash as the big trailing plants do. So I thought having four in here hopefully will provide me with enough smaller butternut squashes to provide me with some soup this winter. That's two. He says they have a they only grow two foot tall with a maximum spread of two foot. So I think that'd be okay. I'll get that one in and I'll go and look if I've got a fourth afterwards. Oh, there's a weed there. And a trowel all the way over there. What a night sky behind me. What a lovely time of day to be working on the garden. It's been quite warm during the day but then it got windy this afternoon and I was going to put this off until tomorrow and then I saw that forecast and I thought nope go and get them in the ground let them settle in before the rain starts overnight right I'm just going to go nip to the greenhouse Pretty certain there's a fourth one to go there. Let's go and see if we have another one. <laughs> we do. This seems really monumental, probably because I think of these as really summery crops. So it's quite exciting. This hedge is starting to get a bit big, isn't it? Oh. Gosh, I've hit the water table down here. To give them water. I know it's going to rain overnight but they need to be settled in tonight don't they? Just my luck it won't rain if I don't water them. Right, that's another two beds filled. It's not many beds to go now. It's all getting very, very real. You may have noticed this little addition in the background of the video so far. This was only put up this afternoon and as much as I loved the little wooden bench that I did have, it wasn't probably very safe because there is barbed wire fence here behind me. But that isn't the main reason that I've gotten rid of it. The main reason I've swapped it for one of these is because Jo, said sister, has one of these on her plot and it's brilliant because it's dual use. So I've been looking for somewhere to store my fleeces and spare netting. And I was looking to buy a storage box or trying to cram things in the little shed that we've got that we share between us. But this, it's massive, absolutely massive inside. 
So I have lots of fleece, I have some spare netting, more fleece, and there's loads of room there to put a lot of the Enviro mesh that I have. So I thought, why not? I don't need to buy a separate storage box now because it's all here and it's really handy to just come here, grab a bit of whatever I need to put out on the plot. Now I do have one more job to do this evening that I keep promising that I'm going to do and that is Windy Night is reminding me that I really do need to do something about how much the asparagus is blowing about. But I don't want these ferns to get damaged with the winds that we've got forecast for tomorrow so I'm just going to try and put a couple of little stakes in and string between them and just see if that helps for now and then I'm going to go in and look at YouTube because I keep saying I'm going to do that, to have a look at how you are all supporting your asparagus. If you've got any tips for me, please drop them in the comments, because I am a bit concerned about damaging the crowns themselves if I stake too close to them. So let's see what I can come up with. <laughs> Noisy geese. I've been and got eight of these. And what I'm planning to do is just to put them in a bit of a narrow alley, for want of a better phrase either side of the ferns. These ones aren't quite in a straight line. Now I'll do the same this end. Oh, I'm not going to be using that one, am I? That's broken. That's no use. Better go and find another. Pretend that didn't happen. Right. I did put tree ties on them originally, but that didn't seem to work. So we'll see if this does now. My plan is to get some string, she says. And I can do this in a couple of places, obviously. I just want to take it down here, wrap it around here, and then back up this side, and I'll tie it to this one. Now, I don't think that's high enough, so what I will do is do it again up here. Then I thought I'd use this string which is a bit more gentle and I was going to try, I don't know if this is going to work obviously, no idea, doing a bit of a support thing right around it here. Well, I'm not going to win any awards for how tidy I've tied up the asparagus, but at least they are now no longer flopping over in the wind, are they? So they're safe and that's all that matters. And it's really nice being over here this late at night because it's quite sweet looking at the ochre, I'll show you. Can you see how cute that is? They close their leaves up at night. I think it's really pretty. There's like the leaves are kind of almost like a flower to me in the way that they close up and they're such delicate, such pretty, pretty foliage. And we noticed something really interesting today. Well, actually my niece noticed it. And that was that the ones that are the white ochertubers actually have red stems. And the white stemmed ochres are the ones that were the red tubers. You'd think that'd be the other way around, wouldn't you? And I did continue to keep them labelled as the red and white so that I knew which was which when I planted them, just in case there was any differences in them. So I'm really pleased about Emily noticing that one. Thanks, Em. 
you'll be pleased to hear that the brassicas that I planted out in my last video are all doing really really well and especially these tender stem broccoli they seem to have gone woof since they've been planted in so maybe we will catch Eli up after all. I've got a question for those of you that grow Cape gooseberries as well. Do you grow them outside or do you grow them indoors? Because I've planted two out in the fruit cage. I did remove the raspberry canes after quite a few of the comments. I had a good look at them and they had pretty much rotten off at the base. There was no root growth on any of them. So what I've done for summer is I have a couple of the Cape gooseberries out here. I'm going to put the other two in the polytunnel and compare how they do. They took forever to germinate. I honestly didn't think that they were going to germinate at one point. And then look at them now. They're like little monster triffids and they are starting to fruit and I was really excited when I read up about these that they are a cross between a gooseberry and a tropical fruit which I assume means passion fruit so I can't wait to try them and I've also put some sunflowers in the middle here which again is really hoping that they will provide shade for these brassicas that are behind them because they're going to need some shade when the sun does come out never grown sunflowers before not even when the children were at school I don't ever remember them bringing home a sunflower well if they did I'm really sorry but we didn't grow them anyway these are sulks since I've planted them out I've got copper queen here and black magic and I have put some ruby eclipse around the arches on the plot hopefully they'll grow and look quite pretty there but is that normal do they get a bit sulky when you first transplant them because these are part of some of the sunflowers that I am growing for Linda's sunflower challenge i was trying to do the titans the really big tall ones but they just fainted in the greenhouse they were not happy at all so i'm not going to have any really tall ones this one isn't looking quite as sulky as it was yesterday so hopefully that's a good sign that it's just a little bit of transplant shock and outdoor shock i probably should have hardened them off a bit better shouldn't i i didn't harden them off at all i've just answered my own question haven't i now i'm just oh my god oh my god I'm just leaving the fruit cage. This is my cherry tree that I bought over winter. Had a cherry tree years ago, never got a harvest from it. The first year I didn't take them in soon enough and the blackbirds ate them. The next year our friendly helper strimmed the whole bush off thinking it was an ash tree. I've just noticed that there's a couple of teeny tiny cherries on them. And that's actually really quite funny because I was watching Laura from the tiny garden the other day and she was on about how her cherry tree had struggled with its health and she'd got loads of blossom on it and she was hoping to have cherries this year as well so it's exciting. I can only see those two so it's not exactly going to be a feast this first year is it but I didn't expect to get any so I'm really going to enjoy those. I'm going to savour them. You know when something makes you happy you always say oh it's like the cherry on top. It really is the cherry on top. I will catch you in the next video but if you can't wait until then YouTube thinks you might like to watch this video. Look after yourselves. Bye!